learn how to make a face on image lens. All right, so the first thing I did was I went on to Pixbay and I found this gingerbread cookie picture that I liked uh, that I could easily cut out the cookie from. And then I also grabbed this just kind of generic cookie background to use as the background of my lens. Next, I opened up that gingerbread cookie picture in an image editor. I'm using Affinity Photo. Uh, you can use Photoshop or whatever. Uh, the first thing I did was I removed the background so that we'd have just the cookie. Then I also went ahead and removed the face. Now, depending on the image you have, you don't need to remove the face because you're going to be covering up. But just with that kind of like, um, there's the high contrast between the cookie and the smile on the eyes. I just wanted to remove it. So once I did that, I exported it and then I was ready to head into Lens Studio. All right, so I'm here in Lens Studio in the new project and I'm just going to drag my two images in to the resources panel. You can also click on this plus button and do from files and find those. And here are my gingerbread uh, cookie image and that background cookie image. Uh, so let's start with the gingerbread image. I'm going to add this and track it to the face. I come to the objects panel and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the head binding or the face image. So the only difference is if I add the head binding, I'll need to separately add an image. If I add just the face image, it will add the head binding for me with an image tracking the head. So here we go. We can see we have an image tracking the head and we can scale this up. So let's go ahead and first add our texture. So I'll click this little box here. Choose that gingerbread cookie image. All right, and it might take just a moment if those are still being processed, that little circle icon. But here we have our cookie. And let's go ahead and scale this up. Uh, so we can scale it to as big as we want. We can go ahead and make it pretty big, uh, just so we have uh, much more uh, space for the face. And I can scroll on my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, let's call this good, and let's kind of track it uh, more or less to the mouth. So uh, you might notice this look at component here on our image. If I switch to the smile person one, where she's turning her head, you can see that the cookie, it's tracking her head, but it's not turning. So if you want the image to rotate with their head like this, get kind of that parallax, uh, you can turn this off. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it turned on just because it's a 2D image. All right, so we have our image here. Now we just need to add the face. So I'm going to come up in the objects panel and I want to add a face inset. Now this might add a separate head binding uh, just to keep things organized. I'll probably uh, just move it all into this original head binding here. So this face inset binding, it's just a head binding. Uh, so I'm going to move the face inset over into here. And I'll just turn this off. And this face inset one, if we select it, we see we have mouth. And you can see here we have the mouth. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this up to where I want the mouth. And uh, you can scale, you can make it wide, you can make it narrow. Uh, so you can just scale however you want. Place it on the uh, cookie and you have the mouth on there. So you can see that the mouth has kind of that parallax as the face turns, the cookie doesn't. Uh, so once again, you can come in here and play with this if you want it to maybe match up a little bit better. Uh, actually, I think I do like having it off now that the face is on. All right, so this is just the mouth. So let's rename this to mouth. And then I'm going to hit Control D or you can right click and duplicate it. And I'm going to name this, I left, I'm going to move it up here, and I'm going to change this to left eye. Now, one weird thing about these face insets is this eye is on my left, but technically it's her right eye. Uh, it's just something to do with the face insets. It is a little backwards in that respect. So it's not the user's left eye, it is on our left. Uh, so we'll place it where we want. I'll duplicate it. Move that one over. Rename to eye right. And then I'll choose the right eye. Now we have both the eyes on our cookie. And so I'm going to go ahead and just delete this other face and set binding just to clean things up. And we are just about done. We got our image, we got our face. Now we just need to change that background. So I'm going to come to the objects panel 
And up at the top, I'm going to add a screen image. And this is a 2D image. Um, so technically all images are 2D, but this one on her face is in 3D space. The screen image is only in 2D space. So for this texture, I'm going to drag that cookie background over. For the stretch mode, I'm going to change this to fill. So this is going to stretch the image. Well, not stretch it. It's going to scale it so it fills without stretching. So even if I switch to, let's say, horizontal mode, it's going to fill it up without stretching. So let's go back to a vertical format. Now you might notice that this, of course, is in front of everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag this up to the top. So it comes first. Now, this doesn't make this image um, get displayed first. Uh, this is just going to help me remember that this is coming first, because now in my scene config, I want this orthographic camera to be rendered before the other camera. So I'm going to click on those little those three dots and drag it up. So that means that anything in the orthographic camera is going to be drawn to the screen and then anything in the regular camera. So now we have our cookie background. We have our gingerbread cookie and we have the user's face on that cookie. And so one last thing to double check is you just want to come in and make sure that the face is um, basically on the same layer as this cookie. Because if we come back to this 3D scene and I want to move the mouth, I can move this mouth in 3D space. If I move it back, you can see it's really feeling disconnected. So if I go back, it's even more pronounced. So straight on looks fine, but when you turn, you can see it gets kind of messed up. So just make sure that your face lines up with that 2D image. All right, and that is that. At this point, you are ready to publish your lens. Now, if you want to add a little more pizzazz, you can maybe add a tap to change to swap out the background. Um, I have a separate tutorial for that uh, linked here. So go ahead and check that out if you want to have multiple backgrounds. And one other improvement you also might want to make is to let this work on multiple people. So let's find a two person preview. So you can see that this is just tracking one head. So if we want to track multiple, I'm going to select my head binding and I'll duplicate that. Now with this head binding selected, I'm going to change the face index to one. Zero is the first head, one is the second. And then uh, we want the same image, but you can see that the face is kind of cloned. So on each of these face insets, you just need to also change that face index to one. We got the mouth, got the eyes, and there we go. So you can see we have the other eyes and the mouth there. Um, you might notice that the cookie is blocking the other person's face. Uh, so um, if the people are further apart, it'll work better. Or you can scale the cookie down uh, to just give a little more space for the other face to show through. But that is how you make this work on multiple faces. You just kind of clone this head binding root, change the face index, and then change the index on each of the face uh, insets as well.